Belakor, also known as the Dark Master and the one who heralds the Conquerors, is a demon prince of Chaos Undivided who is said to be the first mortal to have ever attained the gift of demonhood. Belakor is said to be amongst the most powerful of all demon princes, having been blessed by all four of the major Chaos Gods with a portion of their unholy power. However, upon achieving his apotheosis, Belakor was said to have been all but uncontrollable due to the fact that the Demon Prince was able to be influenced by each of the Ruinous Powers. This in turn would lead to each of the Chaos Gods to create an ever increasing number of Demon Princes which were loyal only to their patron deity. But with each successive mortal that was ascended to demonhood, Belakor would find that his own godlike power had begun to diminish further and further, as the blessings of the gods were increasingly divided amongst their ever-growing number of servants. In response, Belakor, through acts of apparent petulance and spite, would begin undermining the plots and schemes of those who had earned the favour of the Dark Gods, both mortal and demon alike, in order to gain a measure of revenge against those who seized a portion of the power that was, in his eyes, rightfully his. Little does the Demon Prince realise that despite believing he retains his own free will, his actions are nothing more than that of a pawn within the great game of the Chaos Gods, with his deeds being, unbeknownst to him, the bidding of his godly masters. For instance, should Belakor succeed in slaying a champion of Slanesh, it is only because Khorne, the blood god and rival of Slanesh, willed it so. In either case, Belakor is himself known to be an opportunistic and manipulative creature, able to coerce others into doing his very bidding. In more recent times, Belakor has developed an interest, if not fascination, with Abaddon the Despoiler, the current War Master of Chaos, having supposedly spent centuries watching his every move and influencing the ebb and flow of events around him. Indeed, it is as if the Dark Master knows that the fates of both he and the Despoiler are somehow intertwined, even as he continues to wave the War Master's rise to power from the shadows. Despite being a master manipulator, Belakor is nonetheless a powerful and devastating force upon the field of battle, tearing his foes limb from limb with either his bare hands or disemboweling them with his blade of shadows, a keen-edged weapon that can shift from solid matter to an insubstantial silhouette at the merest fort, allowing Belakor to tear his way through flesh, bone and even the thickest of armour plating as if it were nothing. As befitting such a shadowy individual, little is known with any degree of certainty regarding Belakor's origins, due to such information being shrouded in a veil of lies and contradictory sources. Not even the Grey Knights, the Imperium's foremost demon hunters, know the truth regarding as to how the Dark Master came into existence. Legends tell that Belakor has ruled over countless empires since the very dawn of time, with some being said to span over entire planetary sectors. Some have even claimed that during the Age of Strife, the demon would conquer thousands of worlds, forcing their populace to worship him as their one true god, only to abandon them once their civilizations begin irreparably falling into decline. In either case, as to how Belakor came into existence, when he attained demonhood and even what species he was in his mortal life remain unknown to the Inquisition. So what could be the truth regarding the origins of Belakor? One possibility is that Belakor was once a mighty Xenos warlord whose actions pleased the Chaos Gods to such an extent that they blessed the Dark Master with the gift of demonhood. After all, individuals from a variety of different Xenos races have been known to not only pledge themselves to the Ruinous Powers, but have even been known to achieve apotheosis, becoming demon princes of their patron god. The book Freebooters, for example, details how some Orc warbands that fall to the worship of Chaos may themselves be led by an Orcish demon prince. Some of these alien races, particularly the aforementioned Orcs and the Eldari, have existed in one form or another for well over 65 million years, which is more than enough time for an individual from either of these races to ascend to demonhood. However, since Belakor was said to not only be the first demon prince, but the first demon prince of Chaos Undivided, this would initially appear to suggest that Belakor could be no more than 10,000 years old. 
The reasoning for this is due to the fact that Slaanesh, the chaos god of hedonism and excess, would not attain consciousness until sometime around M30, with the god's birth screen being so intense that it not only tore a hole within the very fabric of reality, creating the warp space rift known as the Eye of Terror, but also dissipated the countless warp storms that made interstellar travel all but impossible during the Age of Strife. But despite their birth being a relatively recent affair, Slaanesh has been shown to be capable of blessing their followers with the gift of demonhood even as the gods still slumbered. As detailed within the novel Farseer, Shahak Arthan, a demon prince of Slaanesh, was shown to have existed in their demonic form long before the fall of the Eldari Empire, and not only this, but is heavily implied to have once been an Eldari in their mortal life. Indeed, this is due to the time-distorting properties of warp space, meaning that once a warp entity comes into existence, they have, by extension, always existed. This example is further demonstrated within the novel Wild Rider, detailing how, prior to the events of the War in Heaven, the Eldari and the Necron Tyr had joined forces to seal away a legion of Slaaneshi demons, despite the fact that the events that would give rise to Slaanesh in the first place would not occur for at least another 65 million years. In addition, as shown within the data slate Belakor the Dark Master, Magus Kyber Abrasti of the Adeptus Mechanicus, who has spent much of his life trying to unravel the origins of Belakor, believes that the Demon Prince has existed in various guises for millions of years, even if the Magus himself incorrectly believes Belakor to be some form of alien tyrant as opposed to a demonic entity. Given the evidence Kaiba has collected regarding Belakor's existence, which includes statues of the demon carved from the ancient fossilised bones of Psykers, this would certainly appear to suggest, at least from an initial glance, that Belakor was originally from a race whose civilization predated the evolution of humanity. While the idea of Belakor having once been a Xenos mortal prior to his apotheosis does seem like a fairly reasonable assumption to make, there is another possibility regarding the first demon prince that he originated from an altogether different universe. After all, it's well documented that Belakor has made his presence known not only within the universe of Warhammer 40,000, but also that of Warhammer Fantasy. With this in mind, could it be possible that Belakor himself was originally a denizen of Malus, a planet now known simply as the World That Was? While it may initially seem somewhat unlikely for the Belakors of these two separate universes to be the exact same being, there is plenty of evidence to support the notion of Belakor being, for lack of a better term, a multiversal singularity. This is due to the fact that different universes, such as the Warhammer 40,000 universe, Age of Sigma universe, Dark Future universe, and more, are all interconnected via the warp, despite being utterly separate and distinct from one another. The Liber Chaotica, for example, a tome written from the perspective of a Sigmarite priest from Warhammer Fantasy, and mostly focusing upon the events occurring within that particular universe, does refer to a number of characters and events from the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These include the fall of the ancient Eldari Empire and the birth of Slaanesh, the Black Crusades of Abaddon the Despoiler, the Demon Primarchs, and even the weaponry and equipment utilised by Chaos Space Marines such as Chainswords and Defiler-class Demon Engines. In addition, within the June 2018 edition of White Dwarf magazine, within the Ask Ron Brindle segment, the titular White Dwarf goes on to state outright how countless universes are connected to one another via the warp, as detailed with the following quote. Ugh, a chaos question. Why am I trying to sort out my contracts so I don't have to answer them? Anywho, the realm of chaos is a mystical place that spawns all of existence, stretching across dimensions and time. Sometimes called the Realm of Chaos, sometimes the Warp, Imperium, Immaterium, Formless Waste, Land of Lost Souls, or simply the Abyss. It's all pretty much the same thing. In Warhammer 40,000, it is said that Sanez was created by the Eldarli. After his, or her, creation, Sanez was then freed and journeyed across that Realm of Chaos, where he, or she, crafted a realm of pleasure in excess in which to dwell. From this point on, Sanesh could send his, or her, minions, be they mortal or demonic, to the world that was, or now, the mortal realms, and countless other places. 
Seeing as how similar the elves are to the Eldari, it's no wonder that Sanes took such an interest in them. Additional evidence to support the possibility of individuals being able to journey from one universe to another via the warp comes from the short story Kaldor Drago, Knight of Titan, with the following quote. I see an old world beyond the next horizon, a world that likely never was, where sorcery blew in the very winds and a self-made god-king was all that stood against the ruinous powers. Mayhap I would find the answer there, if I could find it at all. The self-made God King and the world that likely never was, which Draco describes, are clear references to not only the being known as Sigmar, who was indeed a man that would go on to become a God King, but the remains of the Warhammer fantasy world, which, as mentioned earlier, would come to be known as the world that was following the events of the end times. As such, it's fair to assume that Bellacor could have originated from this particular universe only to begin influencing events within other universes upon his ascension to demonhood. In fact, this notion is heavily implied, if not outright confirmed, within the aforementioned Liber Chaotica. According to the fifth volume of this tome, which focuses upon the followers of Chaos Undivided, Bellacor was a denizen of the world that was, who would be gifted with demonhood sometime during the world's prehistory, before coming to be worshipped as a god himself by numerous tribes and peoples over the centuries, although it still remains unclear as to whether or not Bellacor was originally a human, elf, dwarf, or some other race entirely. Over time, however, thanks to his newfound power, Bellacor would begin to grow increasingly arrogant over the centuries, believing himself to be an equal of the Prime Chaos Gods. Angered by the posturing of this upstart creature, Zinch, the god of magic and change, would inflict a curse upon the Demon Prince, forcing him to crown and kneel before those who are destined to become the Ever Chosen, the mightiest of all Chaos Champions. However, Bellacor's curse was said to have been lifted following the coronation of the current Ever Chosen of Chaos, Archaon, the Lord of the End Times. As such, this would indeed appear to indicate that Bellacor had originally been born within one universe, only to cross over into another for his own nefarious purposes following his ascension to demonhood. Perhaps the Demon Prince believes that Abaddon the Despoiler is next in line to receive the title of Ever Chosen. Or maybe Bellacor instead seeks to manipulate the Warmaster into journeying through the warp and into the universe of his birth so that he may face off against Archaeon in single combat in order to determine who truly deserves the mantle of Ever Chosen. Or perhaps the truth is something else entirely. All we can do is speculate. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.